Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Tim here. So today's video is going to be a fun little change of pace. I thought it would be kind of cool to do a paint with me and start a new series of repaints and share some of my favorite paintings as a kid and paintings that still inspire me today. So to kick off this new series, I wanted to repaint Vincent Van Gogh's Cafe Terrace at Night. So Cafe Terrace at Night was painted in the late summer of 1888. It is actually one of Van Gogh's first night scenes and what could be considered the first of his Starry Night series. This piece is actually one of his only unsigned works, which I think is fascinating. And it's only through his sketches of the piece and through a couple of his personal correspondences that were found that art historians were able to confirm that this painting was indeed his. This piece was painted on location at a small cafe in Arles, France. And actually, at the time, Van Gogh had taken some time away from the big city in which he lived and wanted something a little bit quieter. And it was here he fell in love with the nightlife here. And this little cafe that this painting is based off is actually still in existence and has since been renamed Cafe Van Gogh. And the setup of it looks just like this painting. So I hope one day to be able to visit it. I would have inserted a picture of the cafe, but I don't want to put up any Google related images and get in trouble. So definitely check it out. It's such a cute little cafe setup. Doing this piece was definitely good learning because when I started the piece, I didn't realize how much painting footage I would have. So it took a little while to edit and I definitely learned some tips and tricks along the way for recording with my iPad because my iPad was not happy with me for a little while. Um, so one of the biggest challenges of painting a piece like this is how do you recreate the texture of this painting digitally and what brushes or combination of brushes do you use? So if you've ever used any of the oil or texture brushes in Procreate, you also know the struggle is real with them. They are either way too textured, they don't blend very well or look choppy, and then sometimes they look really pixelated up close. And just to preface this, this isn't a sponsored video, but at the time I was going to use the blueberry brush from Angry Miko's Painters for Bear Brushes. I used it to paint a Monet painting a while back and was really happy with how it worked and knew that it would probably work well for this one as well. But recently I signed up for Miko's channel membership at Christmas time and it couldn't have been literally any better of timing because he was offering a couple of special oil painting inspired tester brushes and they were exactly what I was looking for. I ended up with a combination of using his oil on board brush and his thick mixable oil paint to blend with and then I went back and forth between the two to recreate Van Gogh's impasto style of laying down color and these are very thick ways of laying down color it creates a very heavy and distinct looking paint stroke and the blending is actually done through colors next to each other rather than blending the colors together like normal and that's something that I was definitely struggling with with some of the other brushes for Procreate so I was so happy I found these. Every time I approach a a repainting like this rather than trying to recreate every last paint stroke which would be impossible i try to absorb and mimic the style that it's painted in and what from an artistic point drew me to the image and exaggerate those things that i loved about it what drew me to this piece especially is the color story and the overall composition and the focal point. I like to look at the length and width and direction of the paint strokes which is really telling of what kind of brushes he was using at the time, they used a lot of hog hair, ox, and camel hair brushes to lay down the paint with, which really held that thick oil paint. And then they used a lot of the sable hair brushes, which was a lot smoother and softer to blend with. He used a lot of shades of yellows and oranges and greens to exaggerate the cool tones of his work. And by using such a limited color palette with the complementary colors as the main color scheme, it added a lot of drama and emotion to this piece. So from what I'm guessing, a lot of these colors look like they were used straight from the tube, so they have retained a lot of that almost satin-like luminosity and saturation versus what you normally get if you mix the colors first, which I really think makes Van Gogh's work really stand out and really special. Especially for the time period it was painted in, it made it so unique, and I really think that's why his work today has really stood the test of time. The texture you see me making here in the path was also a really fun texture to create. I ended up using the default artist crayon in the Procreate library to mimic the texture of the oil pastel effect, and I was super happy with how the brush textures ended up playing together. I find this piece so fascinating too because in comparison to some of his earlier works, this one 
even though it has a lot of directional paint strokes like the other ones, this one compositionally feels more structured and almost like a jigsaw puzzle of how all the pieces kind of lock together and how many different Vs kind of lead the eye into that middle cafe triangle area. The cafe area was probably one of the harder areas of the piece to paint. It had a lot of like contrasting textures and paint strokes. And I feel like I really got a good sense and appreciation of how many small details were hiding in this area and how much work, love and dedication he painted with. I absolutely love art history, and if you like this video so far and want to see more videos like this, I invite you to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps my channel out. I had so much fun doing this, and I highly recommend doing little exercises like this occasionally. By painting in a new style or imitating your favorite artist, it really helps to give you a new perspective and to really think outside the box. Painting the world with a different lens Going back to your own paintings, it can really give you new insight and different techniques to try out in your own works. This painting took about 16 hours or so to paint. I didn't work on it consecutively, but it was really fun to paint over a couple of days and learned a lot from this painting, both in editing and playing with new brushes. But I hope you enjoyed this video, friend. I really would love to do more in this series. It was so much fun to be able to step into a different artist's shoes. So let me know below if you'd like to see more. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy painting.